three low four four boxing and more. I want to say shout out to the Lions Den boxing community. Welcome to the channel if you're new to the channel. Welcome back to my subscribers and repeat viewers. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I ask that you please subscribe, hit that bell icon. So you get notifications when I post new videos. Um, this morning I want to talk about uh, an interview I watched. Um, actually, we listened to it this morning a few minutes ago. It was um, on YouTube. And someone was interviewing Teddy Atlas about Mike Tyson. And he was talking about you know, Mike Tyson not being a great fighter. You know, Teddy said, um, basically, he, he was just going off the top of his head saying if Mike's record is 50 and 5, in reality, his record's 0 and 5. And he based this on the fact that when faced with true adversity in a fight, Mike always failed to rise to the occasion and he always came up short. Teddy went further to actually say that, and, and I'm paraphrasing, but essentially Mike found a way out of those fights um, to an extent. Um, he failed to show up, so to speak, as well. I think it's kind of what Teddy said. So I, I want to give my give my perspective on that. Um, to an extent, I, I see where Teddy's coming from. You know, we, we all know about the dominance in the late 80s, early 90s of Mike Tyson. Um, we, we know about the streak of first round knockouts. We know about the knockout streak in, in general. We know about the, the fear factor that his opponents had a lot of times before they ever stepped into the ring. The intimidation. You know, um, Teddy, Teddy said, you know, was, was Mike as intimidating a fighter as, as Sonny Liston, yeah. Was Mike a, a great finisher like Joe Lewis to an extent? Yeah. He said that Mike have great power in both hands from either side. Yeah. He said Mike had every all the tools you needed, and 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 he it showed when he was when he was rolling when he was piling guys down. Um, pause. When he was when he was just rolling over guys, you know what I'm saying, just steam rolling guys. All right. Pause it for a minute. Okay, so with Mike, as as long as you know when when he was at the top, he was knocking guys down left and right. Didn't matter if they were like size guys as he was. Didn't matter if they were. Guys that seemed to have a whole foot on him in the ring, Mike was chopping down trees. But with with Mike, when you go to that fight in Tokyo, the Buster Douglas fight, the major upset. In that particular fight, you can say what you want to say about Buster having that added motivation. Due to his mother's death earlier, you can say what you want to say about Mike um, not being um, serious about the fight or overlooking Buster Douglas or what, whatever you want to say about that particular fight. We we know what the result was. You, you can't change that. I mean, yes, we know about the 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 loan count and and all of that stuff, you know. Um, but the reality is. Even the long count in and of itself, that that's a piece of adversity. You know, Mike Mike had his man out of there, in, in, in my opinion. From my vantage point, having seen that replay a hundred times, it a hundred out of a hundred times, I felt like Buster Douglas got a very long count. I also felt like Mike got a quick count, but I don't think it really mattered because Mike was too busy trying to pick up his mouthpiece instead of just getting up. You know, um, but you know that that may part of that was the man wasn't used to being down. But once he was he was down, he stayed down, and and that was that that was my issue with that Buster Douglas fight. But after the Buster Douglas fight, and this is where I feel like 
Teddy kind of doesn't give credit where credit is due in his criticism of Mike. As you know, Mike had two quote unquote wars with Donovan Razor Ruddock, who, if I'm not mistaken, at the time, you know, of course, we were talking about a long time ago now. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, at that time, uh, Razor Ruddock came into that fight undefeated, I do believe. If, if he wasn't undefeated, he may have had one loss coming to that first fight. But any, anybody who followed boxing back in that day and know anything about it know that Razor Ruddock wasn't a, wasn't a wanted man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, guys were going out of their way to not fight Razor Ruddock, not trying to, not guys going out of their way trying to get Razor Ruddock on their on their dossier. You know, um, if I if I had to kind of make a comparison, you know, Razor Ruddock may have been similar to, and I'm not saying style wise. I'm saying um, if you look at the situation at the time. And, and the way the guys um, looked at and viewed by his competition, the guys that, you know, could be in there fighting him but won't, I think Razor Ruddock was some, somewhat a Luis Ortiz of his time. You know, uh, a power puncher with uh, good boxing skill and a guy that the, the big-name guys weren't trying to get in the ring with. You know the guys that were revered as the the, the topper, the top guys in the upper echelon at that time in the heavyweight division weren't dying to get in the ring with Razor Ruddock until after the Mike Tyson fights, and and even then, you know, it probably had some that you know didn't want to do, didn't want to tangle with him. But what I'll say about those two fights is that in both of those fights, those guys fought their butts off. I mean, you you talk about. I mean, just giving it everything you got, you know, and, and for myself, when, when people talk about the decline of Mike Tyson and they try to attri attribute that to Buster Douglas for myself, if, if you want to take, uh, say a fight took anything, something really took something out of Mike. I think the two fights with Razor Ruddock took something out of a lot out of both of those guys. But when, when you, when you say that the man hadn't overcome adversity in the ring and when he was in a tough situation in the ring, he didn't, he folded, so to speak. That wasn't true in the Razor Ruddock fight. Now, maybe there's levels to adversity, but with Razor Ruddock, he was, that fight, that first fight with Mike Tyson, Razor gave as good as he got. And no matter what Mike did, Razor just kept coming back, coming at him. I mean, there was ever a time where you, you could see that a guy just, was was taking your best shots but just refused to go away that was it you know and um i mean i mean really 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 truly tough contest you know what i'm saying for to watch for some people it was a it was a thrill for me to watch but i can see where some people who really kind of like hate to see the brutality of boxing are like man that's a little too much but um i mean for me the fact that he came back and won that fight, the first fight, and then won the second fight against Razor Ruddock, despite what Razor brought to the table, that showed that Mike had a lot of the things Teddy said he doesn't have. Now, fast forward to situations and fights that uh, that came after that, after he came home from prison, and that's another thing people say prison took a lot out of him. But, you know, after Mike came home from prison, it was like every time he got into a fight, every time he had a fight where he had to really face adversity and really struggle in the fight, it was as if he was, he had flashbacks of the fight with Buster Douglas. And, you know, and the thing about Mike and Buster, for myself, when you look at that, it's like, yeah, Buster Douglas showed that he wasn't intimidated by Mike and that Mike was going to have to beat him. That was his attitude. And to Teddy's point, it does seem like every other time, other than the Razor Ruddock fights, that Mike was in a situation where there was a, a guy that was somewhat on his level that had that attitude that 
I, I'm not going to be afraid of you. I'm going to fight you. I'm giving you everything I got. And you're going to have to show me that you can beat me. Mike, Mike failed to deliver in those occasions. So to, to that, I say, yeah, Teddy has some points and, and some of his points can be refuted. But at the end of the day, you know, for myself, if I, if I form my very own assessment, I've always said that I felt like Mike was lacking something mentally to help him get over the top when, when certain things came to the, came to the forefront in his fights, you know, um, in that show. And, you know, when Mike, if you look at the Lennox Lewis fight, Mike went out there in that first round. Lennox, now, if, I, if I'm if i being true, being 100% honest, in that first round of that fight, I remember watching that fight live. I recorded on VHS tape, even though I wasn't supposed to. But um, I remember watching that fight live. And I remember the first round, I'm jumping up and down because Lennox comes out there. He looks like he's a little bit gun shy and a little bit weary of, of Mike. But I, I don't remember what Emmanuel told him in that, in that corner. But when he came out in that second round, he started taking more chances. He started being more active. And slowly but surely, he started picking Mike apart. And, and Mike started being the one that was looking as if he was looking for a way out of the fight. And, and Lennox obliged him, you know, and got him on up out of there. So... For Mike, there, there's been a lot of times where when when the guy he was fighting did not crumble, did not cave, did not fold, he ended up being Mike himself who caved, crumbled, and fold, folded in those situations. So do I think Teddy has some personal vendetta against Mike and kind of just can't allow himself to give Mike credit? I, I think, yeah, he, he can't really allow himself to give Mike full credit for how, how good he really was. But at the same time, I'm not going to just dismiss the validity of what Teddy was saying. Um, I know that I, I remember seeing something some time back where they said that after all those years, Teddy and Mike had you really squashed things. Mike apologized to Teddy, um, so forth and so on. But, you know, at the, same, at the end of the day, you never know what's truly in a person's heart. And, and when they come to how they feel about somebody, they felt like done them wrong. Because, I mean, the situation with Teddy and Mike wasn't just about the fact that Teddy pulled a gun on Mike, shot the gun at his ear, in his ear or whatever the case was. Um, that also hurt Teddy's career because Teddy was pretty much dismissed after that happened. When, when faced with the decision of do we keep Teddy Atlas around or do we get rid of Mike Tyson, Teddy had to go. So, you know, he, he could be grudging harder about it, even though he's saying he isn't. But that's human nature for some people, you know. But, like I said, all in all, I think it was a good interview. I think he made some good points. Do I agree with everything he said? No, but I do agree with some of the things he said. Um, But for myself, I think, I, I, I really think Mike was a great fighter because of all of the things that, just the thing that Teddy did say that Mike was great at. And, and the fact is that, you know, Mike didn't. Yeah, Mike lost five, six, however many fights he lost. A couple of those fights Mike lost because Mike was on decline. And, you know what I'm saying, he was, just, it was, he was just past it to the point that some of the guys he lost to, he'd have never lost to. Now, I don't include Evander Holyfield in that list, but I'm talking about the, the, um, the Danny Williams guy. And I want to say, um, was it, oh man, Kevin McBride or whoever, whoever the, the other guy was that he lost to, um, his last fight or next to last fight. Those guys, I don't think they would, they would ever beat Mike if Mike was 75% of what he, what he had been at his best. But I think when he fought those guys, I mean, no, he had the leg injury against Danny Williams, but I think when he fought those guys, Mike was so far past it that, it, that him losing those fight didn't have anything to do with his will. They may have had something to do with his will in training camp, but it didn't have anything to do with his will in ring or his intestinal fortitude or any of that stuff. But I think Evander Holyfield, everything that Teddy said about Evander and his matchup with Mike Tyson and what made Evander Mike's kryptonite, and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I think all of that stuff was spot on for me. Um, 
And I think that um Mike had guys that were he knew were bad matchups for him, and he strategically didn't didn't get in didn't have those fights. And I think for, I think Foreman was one of them, and I also think Riddick Bow was one of them guys. Mike didn't want to fight. Well, Mike says he didn't want to fight him because they were good friends, but and and I can understand and respect that. But at the same time, you know, um, there have been a lot of good friends that have fought had boxing matches and. You know, that's your livelihood. That's what you do for a living. And you know that there's always a possibility. But I think, you know, Mike made it clear that that wasn't an option. And and I'll and I and I'll say that even Riddick both said himself that he didn't want to fight Mike Tyson. But Riddick does say that what he would have done to Mike Tyson and Mike doesn't ever really say any of that same stuff back. You know, he don't really say that he would have that old Riddick's crazy, I'd have knocked him out, you know, it's more so that, you know, both said, yeah, we came up together, we 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 were good friends when we were young, and went to the same schools, and this and that other, he was like, but if we'd have fought, you know, this is what I'd have done to Mike, and Mike knew it, And but but I, he was my friend, I didn't want to fight him, and Mike kind of just said, no, Bo was my, Riddick was my friend, I didn't want to fight him, and I, I said I'd never fight him. But that said, you know, I'm going to wrap this up. I don't ramble on about this long enough. I mean, this, this, that was the heyday of the heavyweight division, the, the last heyday of the heavyweight division. I know it was greater times than that, but the late 80s, 90s, you know, man, the heavyweight division was, was something back then. But, you know, I, I'll just um, say, you know, once again, to my for myself, I consider Mike to be a, a, a great heavyweight fighter. Um. One of the greatest that I I personally saw with my own eyes, you know, we you know in my era, you know, the era of boxing that you know I grew up and fell in love with the sport. I think Mike was um he carried himself well as a champion when he was in the ring. I mean, what he did outside the ring that's a whole nother conversation. But when in that ring, Mike conducted himself like a champion, and um you know um in in some of those losses, Mike went out on the shield. So you got to get a man credit for that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, what what he was is what he was. You know, I appreciated him when he was when he was winning and he was, you know, undisputed and all that. I appreciate him still today for what he did for the sport of boxing. I just don't appreciate some of the things he says today. Um, you know, his lack of support for um, certain people, but he don't have to support those people. That's his choice. But with the interview, like I said, it was a good interview, spot on. I probably said that three times. I'm having a hard time ending this this uh <laughs> video, but I'm gonna go ahead and close it out. I appreciate you viewing. I'm out.